personality that comes on stage at Independence celebrations when I got to sing, I rock my cherry, one, two. Now what you want to do? OK, so y'all look quiet. I understand. <laughs> it's OK. But she comes out for big concerts. She also comes out when I'm having a bad day. She comes out when I have to say, I's a coconut goddess, cocoa skin dripping madness, juiciness as the baddest. I sweet like a sugar in a plum. Yes, she's the person that comes out when I need to remind myself and I need to affirm myself that I am not only beautiful, but I am intelligent and I am capable. So that is the epitome of my strength in all her regalia, except for her pants. Okay, that's another joke. It's okay, y'all could laugh. It's okay. Then, on the side of her is Influencer Bodine. Influencer Bodine is the person that says to the brands, hey, I have people that you all need to reach, and I have a platform that you can use to reach your brands. So, Influencer Bodine is the one that is relatable. She ain't the one always on stage. She's not the, the one that's always talking. She's not the one that is just always dressed up. She's the one that you see in the gym when I need to lift or sharing advice on things that I need to eat. She's the one that shares her personal struggles with like-minded individuals. And the end person right there, that's the boss, okay? She writes up all of the contracts. She sends out all of the negotiations. She speaks with people and she makes sure that none of these other people get taken advantage of. So you need multiple personalities. Mind you, their schedules sometimes conflict because I'm at work now. And sometimes I might need to jump on a plane and go somewhere and be a cultural ambassador as the coconut goddess. But we figure it out. We've been figuring it out for the last 20 years. So I want us to take a look at some of the things that I do as these multiple personalities. And I'm going to bring it to you in just a second. And if you have a question, please just raise your hand. I'd be very happy to pause and just answer one or two in between the slides, OK? So the first one is the script writer, producer, and host. I don't only teach English language. I apply English language and the language arts. I apply my social studies skills. I apply my home economic skills. I apply my clothing construction skills every time I get in front of the camera. So I have a YouTube series called Bodine Pot. I teach people how to cook Bahamian food step by step, sometimes with an international twist. I am also seen on Fabulous Living Bahamian Style, which I am listed as a writer, producer, and the host of. So your girl got to travel free of charge with pay for an entire summer on behalf of the Broadcasting Corporation of the Bahamas. Oh, yes, girl, I did that. And I took photos, I wrote scripts, I interviewed people, and I posted that to my social media, and that turned into more money for me. So I got paid three times. All right. Then you have the actress. She's also involved in cultural innovation. So y'all see my picture at the top? Y'all see that? I ain't even the star of the show. But my character is Trapsy. So I work along and I collaborate with other actors. That's Leah Enius on my left. She just won an award as or for her work in Goombay Kids. That's my girl right there. Thanks. And then you see Travolta Cooper. He is the screenwriter, director of Where in the World is Wally, which is a supernatural series that focuses on folk tales in the Bahamas. Say it again. <laughs> so listen, I need y'all to understand. I on YouTube, I on ZNS, I on Cable Bahamas. At the same time. <laughs> Plenty of people can't say that. Okay, but this ain't about me. And then you have singer, songwriter, and ambassador. 
So the work that I do in culture, which is taking the music of the Bahamas and repackaging it in a way that is viable and it is entertaining and it continues to bring forth the traditional culture of the Bahamas, has allowed me to be seen on stages right under Patrice Roberts. I opened for her. So she was at the top and I was right under her. Y'all know Patrice Roberts, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, okay, I see who knows her. I've opened for Marshall Montano. I've opened for Bungie Garland. I've opened for the reggae greats. I know Director Taylor probably side eyeing me right now. I ain't even looking in his eye right now. <laughs> I've done that. But it's because of the music writing skills. But in addition to the music writing skills, you also have to be able to present a persona or your character has to be so clear that people don't have a problem with associating you with their brand. So I've been a brand ambassador for BTC. I've been a brand ambassador for Bahamas Masqueraders. I am the current Bahamas Salvation Army Hope Ambassador and the Evolve Bahamas Gym Bas Ambassador, plus a few other ambassadorships that I don't have here. So why am I telling you all of that? It's because in that 10 minute introduction, um, you're going to learn how we define social media, how we communicate using social media, how you craft a presence, and how you monetize social media. Which part y'all wanna hear first? We ain't going to monetization until y'all go to the first step. Y'all fast. All right, so just very quickly, what is social media? Simply put, applications and website that allow you to connect to interact, collaborate, and to share content. What is your understanding of content, ladies and gentlemen? Oh, this this for y'all to answer. Does everybody understand what content is? Not you. It's my child. I. You, you. Nobody understands what content is. Okay, no problem. We're gonna go to the next slide, and when we go to the next slide. This is uh, what we call a prompt, okay? So Facebook, why do you go to Facebook? What do you go to Facebook for? What do you see? Y'all talk to me because let me tell you, my classroom is never this quiet. I don't wanna hear content. What types of content, please? Memes, advertisements, yes ma'am? Yes, communication. What form does the communication take? Teachers, stop cheating. <laughs> Y'all, come on, quick, quick. Don't be afraid to talk to me. Scream at me if you need to. Y'all spend all day on Facebook catching jokes. Sorry? Yes, you chat with your friends. So Instagram, raise your hand if you, now, y'all, underage, who, who has Instagram? Okay, one, two Instagram people. What about your WhatsApp? Okay, everybody has WhatsApp. What about Twitter? Have you ever heard of, thank you, thank you. Have you all ever heard of Bahamian Twitter? Thank you, Bahamian Twitter is a whole vibe. I'm gonna need you all to get into it. Bahamian Twitter is the, the commonwealth of Bahamian Twitter. Okay, then you have YouTube. Hands up. What kind of content do you go to for YouTube? Videos. Cooking videos, unboxings, tutorials, what else? TED Talks to learn how to create videos. All right, Twitch. Now, Twitch is a young people one. That's for the gamers, correct? Okay. Then you have Discord. Raise your hand if you have a Discord server. Good. What do you discuss or what's the content that you find on Discord? Yes, what type of communication? Okay, so gaming, communication, but also you have communities. And then we have the topic of media, okay? Now, here is what I need us to understand because media actually has two meanings that are very pertinent to this discussion today. The first one is, as a means of communication, media encompasses broadcast, publishing, and internet. Broadcast, television, and traditional radio then publishing your newspaper, your magazines, your physical books, and the internet, which has taken over all of those traditional forms. Then you have art. 
Now, art is any combination of the tools that are used to create art and present a message. I intentionally asked everyone if they knew what content was because your content is art. Whenever you put pen to paper and paint to paper or pen and paper to anything, that is art. Anytime you create a video, that is art. Anytime you create a piece of music, that is art. Art is the way that we communicate. And so many of you who are currently in the process of creating content don't even realize that you are in the process of fulfilling your artistic expressions. But y'all want to hurry up, jump to monetization. <laughs> you all know what content is. Can we focus? Can we? Yes? Only two people focusing. I could see you focus because you're looking in my eye hole. <laughs> all right. So we need to understand that social media is about connecting. You connect people through common experiences. And just like there are neighborhoods, there are common places, common expressions, common understandings. If I say, no, I ain't going to say that because I can get in trouble. No. No, I'm not going to say it. No, I'm not going to say it. The director looking in my mouth. Um, well, to be honest, for my star teaching, I was in trouble. I sat down for the interview, and Mr. Johnson said, now, you know, you could have to stop doing all these things on stage. And I said, I could say I could promise that. And if I had stopped, it would have been a problem. So I'm happy that you said that. You have to be genuine. Yes. Director Null said, I'm going to be genuine in my expressions. I'm going to be genuine in my interactions. What you see is what you're going to get. No long talking about that. The next thing is you need to take the time to learn. How you going in somebody else's neighborhood, they neck of the woods, and you don't know what the culture is in that space, but you want to present something that is intended for them. In turn, you call that content. Don't do that. That's rude. So you need to learn, okay? And in order to learn, you have to really take some time to study. There's a bit of social and psychosocial work that's involved in developing. Now listen, I know the same with y'all come to here, but I have to tell y'all because some of y'all think you just turn the camera on and automatically post it to the internet and the money is appeared. That's not how this works. At least not if you want longevity. So to create your social media presence, let's take a look at um, Das Quay. Now y'all familiar with Das Quay, right? Okay, what's your favorite thing that Das Quay says? That was before the pandemic. <laughs> now, now <laughs> I didn't do six lifting trips. I didn't miss any days. Just letting you know it. I was to work. I was to work. Okay, so let's take a look at um, Dasque's social media page, and I think it should be able to play. Yeah, right there. Okay, so. Press play. I think you should be able to play it from here. Hold on. Shh, mind your business. <laughs> OK, so let's take a look at Quay's page. Ah, there we go. If you look at Quay's page, Quay has a number of different endorsements. He has Bamboo Shack. He has Rubis. He also has other big brands. But guess what? Quay is also an actor. What is the most common way that Bahamian people interact with one another? We like what? Talk. Yes, that too. Laugh. We like laugh, humor. So in Bahamian vernacular, we like jokes. We like jokes. If you think that he is just a, a comedian, you miss. He is a comedian and an advertiser. He is a marketer. What Quay does is marketing, using humor. So when we sit down in language arts class and we say, write us a persuasive argument essay, you don't have to be serious with the, way that the tone that you use. You can use humor. In addition to him using his humor, 
he also incorporates the visual aspect of it. So he's able to give you a very relatable visual, which is the reason why you laugh. And that is how he markets. The moment he has you laughing is the moment y'all steal his video, y'all put it in WhatsApp, and y'all share it. I want to just imagine or remind you all to please share the link. Stop stealing the videos. We'll talk about that in a minute. So now, let's go into which skills do I need in order to connect through social media. You need performing arts. All of the theatrics. You need the theatrics. Ms. Johnson, I am not an actor. That's okay. Do you realize you don't have to be an actor to be a part of the performing arts? You can be a script writer. Like I said, you need persuasion. You need acting. You need storytelling, scripting, and visual communication. All of the fine arts, they are interconnected. Those skills are skills that you develop through practice, but you also learn them through observation. Again, social. Let's continue. And we also need to understand that social media is a reflection of our culture. Now, this comes from the IDB book called Healing a Broken World, The Power of Art for Social Transformation in the Post-Pandemic Era. The quote is by Charles Landry, and it says, our culture is digital. See, we were in the spirit, we were in the spirit director. And it is the digital that shapes our culture. They go hand in hand. The digital is now the air we breathe and the electricity that flows. This is all, this all requires cultural adjustment. So when they speak about culture, it really means the way that we do things. Everything is digital, so you are very, very rarely going to see that a lot of persons put the time into face-to-face -face plays and things like that. They're going to put them online because the more views you get, the more money you can stand to make. Understood? But you still have to go and support them. So let's go to influence, and I promise I almost finish. We can get to monetization very shortly. Influence is the ability to direct flow. What are we trying to make or trying to make flow? What are we trying to direct people to? Tell me. Your page? Is it only your page? Come on, guys. Where do you want to direct people? to the business, and your influence also encourages people to do what? Share, uh, trust, trust, buy, listen, sell. Is there anything else that you want people to flow towards? Y'all want to learn about monetization. <laughs> I'm tell And somebody said it, engagement. Was that an adult or a student? OK. You want them to engage. Thank you so much, adults, for giving the, the assistance. So let's talk about how we actually find the community. You have followers, correct? Hashtags. How many of you have your own pages? Your, ooh. One, two, three, four. How many of you have your own custom hashtags? Excellent. I see one, two. How many of you know specifically what you want people to know about you, what you want to present? I love this. I should have bought something for you. I'm sorry. Do you mind telling us a little bit about your page? <laughs> no? OK, you don't want to be put on the spot. That's fine. I have a, a, just a quick screenshot. When I hashtag, I always hashtag Bodine Victoria. The results that come up, they mention me in food, entertainment, Bahamian influencing, influencing as a Bahamian influencer and Bahamian culture. Those are the words and the hashtags that I have um, so that when you're looking for a Bahamian in entertainment, who you will find voice? <laughs> this is th the top Google results with those particular hashtags. So that's a key. Please make sure that you know how to find your community by using common hashtags. If I want to find NBA young boy, what do I type in? <laughs> Obviously. Uh-huh. Or I can type I can actually type in a lyric to a song, right? A popular song lyric. Or I can go on TikTok and what would I search for? His name. And what's going to come up? His page or anything that is a? Okay, good. 
So you find your community, and from there you find a community of people that like that. So guess what? You look at their hashtags, and then you start to hashtag your posts that are related to that with their hashtags. Boom, you in the community. Consistently, y'all, that's a tip. Honestly, you're welcome. It was free. <laughs> you can have that. All right. So from here, let's look at Dari Skin. Are you? How many of you are into beauty? Two people. Only two people like their skin? Only two of y'all want to take care of you? Okay. Okay. Yes, because I'm thinking here, this junior high school, y'all ain't about this life. She has five million hits on one video on TikTok for an international brand. So she has brand sponsorships and brand deals coming in from international clients. How many followers does she have on Instagram? Did you think that she would have five million? Fol no. What does that tell us? Let's, let's draw a conclusion. What does that tell us about our follower count? Thank you. The follower count is misleading. So you're not just going for followers. You're going to provide quality, okay? It is the quality of the content, the quality of the art. So if you play her video, you're going to see that she has all of her content because I scroll, like I scrolled it. So if you look at her content, her content is niche content. She does makeup and skin content. So her content is specifically for that makeup, skin, and beauty community. And so when she posts a product as a dark skin gal from a tropic climate, people are looking to see how is that going to affect me? Is this going to work for me? So social media as a business requires you to do a little bit of market research, all right? So you can continue. This is how I typically engage with a community. When I threw this out, I threw this out for the diet community, and I also threw this out for the farmer's market community. Because in the video, I went to the farmer's market and I sourced a lot of these things because I'm shooting my shot at the Department of Agriculture for sponsorship. I'm going to just let y'all know. That's how you shoot your shot at governmental agencies and brands. You incorporate their products and their services into what it is that you're doing. Do you have any brands or do you have any companies that you think that you want to work with? Any places, like persons that you think that you would want to be the face of, people that you purchase from all of the time that you would just like one or two free things from? Yeah. yeah. Raise your hand if you like free things. Y'all like free things because y'all don't want to talk to me, and I trying to tell y'all, I trying to show y'all how to get a hookup. Okay, so from there, let's get to what y'all really want to know. Wow. Read it. <laughs> so we already have the performing arts, right? Okay, what's the first skill under business management? What's the second one? Third? Fourth, fifth, sixth, and Ooh, child. how much y'all think y'all can make it? One, two, three, four, five. You want me to tell you the, the honest to God truth? Like, you want me to tell you? You want me to tell y'all the truth? I, could y'all say yes, please? The truth is, you'll be doing this and you don't even know. <laughs> when you sit down at the lunch table and you say, uh-uh, that costs $2, I, I'm not paying $2 for that, that's worth blah, 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 or I'll give you this if you give me that, that's negotiation. You all already have that skill. All you need is the knowledge about it. When you sit down there and you say, oh, man, I have this test so I can take a nap, wake up 3 o'clock in the morning, review, it's time management. When you say, oh, wow, I won't go to this party, so what I can do, I'm going to turn this party and my experience at this party into a bit of content. I'm going to do a day in my life. That's time management and content creation. You will be running a business without even knowing. But I want us to talk about the inventory management part 
Raise your hand if you know that you would be your business. You are your business. Raise your hand if you know that. You know that? Okay. So in creative time, and director will tell you this as well, I sit down and every time I work on a project, I have my QuickBooks open and I take note of how many hours it takes me to finish a project. Because my time is money. That's my inventory. That's my time. I have to account for that. And I charge based on that. I charge based on that. <laughs> but also, you would need to understand that if you need a camera, if you need a cell phone, a cell phone for me is not just a cell phone. I can't have a bubbler. My cell phone have to cost $1,500. Why do I need a $1,500 cell phone? I edit on my phone. I broadcast from my phone. I need a good camera. So I have to account for the amount of time that I spend, and I use that. And that's an investment. That's a two-year investment. So I got to break that down. You need me to use my phone for work? I got to manage my inventory. You need me to do this, this, and this using my phone? I don't have no more phone. You're going to have to give me a phone. That's inventory. You don't have it in stock. It ain't here. OK. Let me pull it back because that other person was coming out. All right. And then you have your social skills. So here's something that we need to understand. The work that I do requires me to speak with people all the time. My colleagues at work will tell you, well, wow, is it really at work anymore? Anyway, when I was teaching, my classroom was all the way to the back, to the last class on the end. It was so far. Nobody was coming to me. I loved it because I could do my work. But people knew that they can access me anytime they needed to access me for particular things. Just because I'm far away and I'm isolated does not mean that I'm not a team player. You have to isolate yourself sometimes when you have creative work to do because you cannot interact with people 100% of the time and still be creative. That's poor time management. So I sat with the Minister of Culture, the Minister of Youth, Sports, and Culture last week Tuesday in a negotiation with a group out of France last week Tuesday evening. I need y'all to register that. Y'all registered? OK. Y'all see it later. I just got asked to sit on a commission to be part of a committee. The director then put me on one, and now I'm, I'm hearing that I've been instructed to assist with another inter-ministry or inter-department project that's happening. I've been to work for two days. The work that I do with ZNS, the work that I do with Cable Bahamas, the work that I do with BTC, the work that I do with REV, it requires me to have social skills. I can't fly up in people's face just because they say something that makes me upset. I cannot post my feelings on social media just because I am upset. I cannot cuss people out on camera <laughs> and within hearing range of other people just because I am upset. I cannot just shoot an email out to people and say, you are making no sense. Just because they send me something back in a negotiation that does not add up. I have to really think and consider and politely respond to or deny their requests. Those are social skills. There are times when if you want to promote your brand, you're going to have to weigh out the value of you going on a trip and being unpaid, it being unpaid, and looking at what the advantage of that opportunity is going to afford you or the people that you are exposed to. Listen to me carefully. The business of social media ain't just about collecting your, your check at the end of the day. The business of social media is being social. But it is a balance of social and community. 
find the community, implant yourself in the community, create content, create art that speaks to that community. Do not allow yourself to be taken advantage of. Give people the opportunity to support you. Put your PayPal link under your YouTube video that is free. You know what's going to happen? The more times people watch that video, they're going to say, I like this content. I'm going to support. Let me send so-and-so this $5. What do you think Patreon is? Patreon is paid YouTube, but without the commission. I just gave you all another platform, by the way. So at the end of the day, you earn your money through placements, your licensing, your advertising, and your free, well, your performances. So we're going to go to the last two. Go to slide 22, the Rock of My Combo slide, please. So two, one before that. Here we go. Um, this is me licensing my music. <laughs> I made the song. I paid to have the song done. The song was licensed to BTC so that they could use it for their advertising. Comp their advertising. I was able to not only collect a talent fee as the person that is performing, but I also got commission off of the use of my song. When you create, negotiate, and place yourself, okay? It, it is a video, but it's okay if it doesn't play. So, right. That's me. That's my song, Rock on My Jerry. Did they, remix it? they remix it. When you create content that's culturally relevant, no matter how old it is, people are going to use it. So, that's me. Director sitting here like... <laughs> okay. Then... This is Fabulous Living Bahamian Style. This is where I got to collaborate and travel. When I sat down with the editors, the editors showed me little tricks. This is how you do a transition. This is how you create this. This is how you cut this. I'm always learning. I don't take jobs where I cannot learn. They're valuable to me. Oh, and I got an ambassadorship from this as well, too. All right? Then this is some work. Go to the next one that I did for Best Brew Bahamas. This is voice work. It's a coffee commercial that plays on NBC, <laughs> ABC, and MSNBC for a Bahamian company. I did the voice work for this. So the last thing is the analysis. I know you all won't get to the business, but honestly, the business of social media requires analysis. So E.O. Colebrook, go over one. Every time I do work for a brand, Every time they give me a check, I have to give them what we call insights. I have to analyze the data. I have to look at the reports that are in the back end of my social media. And I have to tell them, OK, well, I have 4,999 subscribers now. Last year, I only had 1,000. What am I doing? I've not put a video out in a year for Bodhi and Park. What am I doing? No, the content is good. People like it. They keep coming back. In the last 28 days, with me doing nothing on this page, there have been 6,000 people that came to this page. I've done nothing. I've posted nothing. I've promoted nothing. I've done nothing. It sits here. What are you seeing on your back end? When I look at this, I'm able to say, OK, I have 411.7 thousand watch hours, and then I have 3,000 400 unique views. So that means of the 6,000 people that have watched this video this month, sorry, this week, of the 6,000 people, 2,600 of them, that's the right number, yeah, 2,600 of them are return viewers, but I have 3,400 unique viewers. That's unique people that you could be reaching. So when I sell an ad space on Bodine Pot, I'm able to say I can reach 3,400 unique viewers on average. This maths. Just letting y'all know. Is anybody, you know, a little bit overwhelmed with all of the information? Okay, oh, smart, I like that. <laughs> okay, so last slide on the analysis, Ms. Colebrook, and I'm wrapping it up right now. 
go back. Oh, that's me. <laughs> so this slide here also tells me what time my viewers are here. The advantage that you have as a creator is over somebody that advertises for television or advertises for radio is 24 hours after, not a week. You can go into the back end of your YouTube studio or your Instagram creator studio, and they give you the analytics that tells you, okay, well, Ms. Johnson, wow, I can post on a Sunday at 6 o'clock because that's when my people will be watching. I can post on a Monday at 6 o'clock p.m. because that's when my people will be watching. I can sell higher ad rate times at 6 p.m. because I know based on this graph, that's when my audience will be watching. That's English language and mathematics in practice. And guess what? You didn't even have to create this graph. It's done. They make it easy for you. So the only thing that you need to do as somebody that creates is know what you want to create. Know the community that you are a part of. Create something that is of value. And don't stop creating. Find ways to license. Don't give it. Don't give it. Don't give it away. Find ways to license. Find ways to place. Find ways to sell what it is that you are creating. And you can create an opportunity for yourself. I'm going to let you all in on a little secret. I love you, girl. <laughs> she she tip her head like, what is it? <laughs> so my secret is, director, close your eyes, please. Right? Okay. So a little secret. Last year, when we were not having concerts, one of my songs earned me Sis, sis. <laughs> like she's like, okay. Mm. Let me just put it this way. I could have buy me a parcel, a cube, off of one song. It's my happy dance. This is my socially acceptable happy dance. Well, I had the ministry, okay? That's the happy dance. I'm saying to you, you have the opportunity to earn. You have the opportunity to create. You have the opportunity to empower yourselves. You don't have to do it by yourself. You can put together a team of people because I know all of us do not have all of these skills. I don't have all of these skills, although I'm able to be proficient in many of them. But at the end of the day, your aim whether you decide to be in agriculture and you want to manufacture jam, you want to cook, whether you decide that you want to be a carpenter and you want to create YouTube videos that are how-tos, whether you want to be a beauty professional, you want to do mechanic work, you want to show people how to modify things, whether you are in coding and you're learning simultaneous equations, so you want to show people how to, how to code, however it is that you decide to structure your business, you have the ability to do so. Monetizing that, it's just a matter of being able to reach your market and knowing how to ensure that you provide enough value that people want to buy into. So I want to say thank you guys so much. You can follow me at Bodine Victoria across all my social media platforms. <laughs> oh, I thought you had a pen. <laughs> you can follow me at Bodine Victoria across all my social media platforms at Bodine Pot which is my YouTube channel. And once you put in Bodine Victoria or Bodine Pot, you'll be directed to the relevant social media. And you can go to bodinevictoria.com or bodinepot.com. You can reach out to me through any of them if you want any advice, any direction, if you need me to show you where you can go for apprenticeship. I know some people. I know some people that would be willing to help. So again, ladies and gentlemen, Thank you guys so very much. I hope that you found this informative and you have a fantastic day. Oh. Yes, ma'am. Uh, 
let me tell you something, time management is a gift. <laughs> but I do, I have hired an illustrator for one of my projects. I've hired an illustrator because that's not a skill that I have and it requires a lot of work. Um, I've also hired a lawyer. I've hired an accountant. So technically, but they're on a four hire basis. So basically I pay them every time I need to use them. I don't want to have to be responsible for national insurance for actual employees. So being able to use them on a for hire basis is more beneficial for, for my cost and my, my breakdown analysis. Are there any other questions? That was a very good question, by the way. People think that because you work for yourself, you don't have to hire people, or they think that you don't have to pay national insurance. The truth is, when you have a business, and if you hire people, whatever it is that you bring in, you have to account for salaries for persons. You have to account for insurances for persons. For example, when I go on stage, if I bring my fire dancers, I actually get insurance for them. Because if they burn, yeah. Mm -hmm. If they burn themselves while they're on stage, while they're working for me, I am liable. Y'all ain't know that, eh? Yeah. Yeah. I'm also a limited liability company. So, yeah, yeah, we'll talk about that a little bit later. I set myself up as a limited liability company so that if anything happens to anybody who I have employed, in addition to their contracts, I cannot have my little piece of pension taken away. My little punch buggy, I need that. Can't have it taken away completely. So, you know, depending on the work that you do, you may also need to Consider how you're going to structure your business, but that's a different conversation for a different time. Are there any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Okay. What may you? Can I have your name, please? Hi. What made you want to become an entrepreneur, and what was the kick that got you up higher? I like money. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, though, um, the types of jobs that I take, really and truly money is not the, the main objective. I decided to become an entrepreneur because my mother was an entrepreneur. My mother taught typing at Toya's Typing and Computer School um, in Jerome and Roosevelt Avenue. What she did is she trained other young persons that may have dropped out of school, and she got them their certifications so that they would be able to apply for better positions in ministry offices and legal offices. So she helped them to upgrade their standard of living, and so that was part of the entrepreneurship bug for me. The reason why I decided not to do teaching as an entrepreneurial venture is because I am a creative. I need to create. I need to make things. So I needed something to balance out the fact that I create in a school environment for students, but I'm also a whole human being on the outside of that. And I want to sing about rocking my cherry, and I want to sing about juicy fruits, and I want to sing about being a coconut goddess, and I want to rap, and I want to travel, and I want to, to create visual art. And so my entrepreneurial journey is also very much so a creative outlet for me that I monetize, because I like things. Are there any other questions? No? Okay, thank you so kindly. You all have a fantastic day. Before you go, Ms. Johnson, I'm going to call Shantanique from T.A. Thompson. Ms. Johnson, we would like to thank you for your insightful presentation. Your presentation made me search within myself to see how to be the best version of myself. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, we'll bring it to the front. Come, come around. Mm -hmm.
right here. Let's give E.O. Johnson another round of applause. <laughs> you definitely opened our eyes and educated us on how we really can make social media work for us in generating profit. Our second speaker is Mrs. Tyronda Glinton. Tyronda Knowles Glinton, certified youth leader, IT professional, and trainer, lives by the quote, a, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. She is a certified project manager and University of the Bahamas Computer Information Systems graduate, BBA. Professionally, she serves as a project lead for a number of digitization projects in the public sector. Tyronda is an advocate for youth empowerment, STEM education, and entrepreneurship. Because of her passion for youth development, she held the position of contestants manager at the Miss Bahamas Teen Organization for seven years, where she mentored over 40 girls. After realizing the gender and skill gap in science, technology, engineering, and math in the Bahamas, she founded FemSTEM Bahamas. This non-for-profit organization's mission is to expose, educate, and equip high school girls to become science, technology, and engineering and mathematics leaders. Tyronda graduated a part of the first cohort for the American Woman Embassy Program. Through this program, she established her business, TG Consulting Services. Tyronda aspires to complete her MBA in disaster recovery and climate change to contribute to the response of two disasters that severely impact the Bahamas. Let us welcome Mrs. Glinton. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for that well, warm welcome. As indicated, my name is Tyronda Glinton, and I am presenting to you today on the to topic, Future Careers in STEM. Ms. Colbert, I'll just let you take that away. I need the sound, the sound, no sound? Okay, no worries. Everybody know this dance, though. No, y'all don't know this dance? It ain't look like something y'all know? Not at all? He trying A. All right, everybody know about TikTok, right? Show of hands of everybody want TikTok. Yeah, man, everybody knows, should know that song wants the sound play, don't worry, y'all know what it is. How many of you know who created TikTok? Y'all just know somebody from China. <laughs> but y'all ain't know who created. Next slide. Well, the creator of TikTok is Zhang Yingming, the secret Chinese billionaire who created TikTok. He is currently worth $44 billion. So while y'all jump and it at a, that song, I, I know the words. <laughs> he make $44 billion of a platform that you use for free. But he's a 44 billionaire. This is what I came to talk to you today about, careers in STEM. So for you, you might be wondering what is STEM? STEM is science, technology, engineering, and math. The sciences deals with discovering and describing. You are actually trying to get a better understanding of what life is. Technology deals with in innovation and innovation and technology, improving the natural world. 
Engineering is concerned about controlling, modifying, and designing, basically solving problems. And math is making sense of the world through numbers. Show of hands of you like math. What we get? All right, four persons in here who love math. Awesome. So you might be asking, well, why is STEM important? STEM is very important because without it, we would not exist. Have, how many of you have ever heard of the term STEM before? Just about three of you. STEM is all around us. It's who we are, it's what we consume, it's what we do, it's the wig on my head, it's the makeup on my face, it's the shoes on his feet or your feet, it's the clothes that you wear, it's the air that we breathe, it's all around us. So, could you imagine the world without light, medicine, food, airplanes, more things important to you, TikTok, your phone? Could you imagine life without it? No. STEM encompasses all of these things. And without it, like I said, we would not exist. So who is in STEM? You see any faces that you recognize here? Who do you recognize? Sabal from Lady Above Us. Okay. So anybody else recognize Sabaz? Anybody else? You should have seen during the COVID-19 protocols, the doctor on the top, Dr. Nakia Forbes. These are people in STEM. And for you, it may be seeming like a new concept, something that may have been strange to you. But these people exist in the field of STEM. Most people know Sabaz because he owns, or as far as you know, a number company, right? A gaming company. But he's actually in the field of technology. One of the areas in STEM. Did you guys re re most recently watch um, his Facebook video? No? Well, he is very lucrative. He got a very lucrative business because of his involvement in technology. Dr. Nakia Forbes is an epidemiologist who helps to define and share information about infectious diseases. And as we know, everybody heard of COVID-19. Now, while to you it may not be anything more than a uh, you know, pandemic, a uh, very serious virus, you need somebody to create vaccines, treatment, take care of you uh, if, you're get, if you are to fall ill. This is why these people, and this is why STEM is important. So you may be asking, what are some of the careers in STEM and how can I become involved? There are a number of careers in STEM. You can go from the plant-based versions as an agriculturist, I'm gonna move over for a second, an agriculture engineer, a biochemist, that's fine, a biochemist, you can be a botanist, a conservationist, an ecologist, a farmer, and some people look at farming and agriculture as a not a very, in a good light. But without food, we cannot survive. And they are also considered under the science stream. We have irrigation engineer, oce ocean oceanographer, sorry, park ranger, a taxonomist. And some of these professions, and I'll just describe them for you, a uh, arborist cares for and manages trees. A biochemist investigates chemical processes that take place inside living things. A botanist deals with the study of plants. Then we have the anim animal um, category. You would have your, once again, your biochemist, your geneticist, you have your herbiolo herbologist, you have your ophthalmologist, and a number of different careers. You have your zoologist. And then when we get into the human component, and then I'll just move over real quick, you have your anesthesiologist, as who is a doctor who administers um, anesthetics. You have your biochemist again, your biomedical engineer, the person who's responsible for designing medical tools. So the ventilator that you breed, use to breed. They design those uh, materials. You have your cardiologist. Anybody know of a bohemian cardiologist in here? Anybody? 
This person was also a politician. Dr. Dr. Dwayne Sands, who is responsible for um, the heart. Then you have your dentist, you have your dietitian, you have your neurologist. That is, anybody know what a neurologist is? The brain doctor. Then you have the oncologist. Anybody know what that person is responsible for? Cancer patients. Then you have your optician, ophthalmologist. See, I am in technology, so somebody's words kind of big for me. <laughs> I can just be real. Um, you have the orthodontist. Anybody knows how is that person different from the dentist? Yeah, they're responsible for your braces. You have a pathologist. You have a pediatrician. Let's make no, not the pediatrician. I want to say the foot doctor one. Pathologist. Yeah, pathologist. You all know what it is. <laughs> so. Point being is you have a lot of career options when it comes to STEM careers in the sciences. And this is just the sciences. Anybody in here would like to be uh, anything in the medical field, a scientist? I kind of figured because you knew what it was. You want to be a marine biologist. And we're going to talk about that career in a minute. Um, Ms. Goldberg, you just go to the sl next slide. So then we have... Um, the other components of the sciences, you have the psychiatrist and the psychologist. And most people get those two um, interchangeable or, you know, mix it up sometimes. Then you have your sports scientists. Anybody in here like sports? I know for the most part, the guys would have raised their hand. You, your favorite um, athlete, they would have to see a sports scientist or somebody in kin kinesiology who would be responsible for making sure that they are basically regenerated to be able to play. And they make a very um, good salary as well. Then you have the obstetrician, the um, taxologist, the urologist, okay? And that's the si just, just some of the sciences. Then when we talk about materials and, and engineering, you have the persons who are in construction, so you have the person who they call the builder. Um, you have the chemical engineer, the chemist, the geologist, the material scientist, the mechanical engineer, um, you have civil engineer, you have a number of categories. Anybody in here would like to do anything in the engineering field? What kind of engineer? Aeronautical, Aeronautical engineer, we're going to get that there. Then we have the seasonal um, professions, the meteorologists. Anybody know of a local beam in meteorologists? Mm -hmm. yes, What's his name? Basil Dean, yes. But we have a very limited amount of meteorologists in country. Beyond Basil Dean, we have Wayne Neely, and we have an actual female meteorologist. So that particular profession studies the atmosphere and the weather condition, which is very important to our country now because, well, it always was important, but especially important now because of what exactly? Climate, Climate change and hurricanes. Um, then we have... Professions that deals with um, geography, rocks, fossils, and soil. So we have the archaeologist, the architect, the builder, again, um, the geolog geologist, again, and volcanologist, which we not, may not have an issue with in this country, but it is an option for you to study. Then we have the lights, um, and then you have the astronomer, right? Anybody know what an astronomer is? Studies the space, yes. Um, an optician. Then you have, again, the aeronautical engineer, who is the engineer responsible for designing and developing designs for the airplane. The architect, again, the ar astronautical, astronautical engineer, astronomer, uh, physicist, pilot. Anybody would like to be a pilot? No? That's fine. And renewable e energy engineer. And then we have the geneticists, the geologists. Once again, ocean, I will go same, same groups of people um, that exist. And then we have all of these other professions, and I'm going to just skip over these ones that basically still deals with the sciences and the engineering. And I'm going to quickly go into the computer science, which is the profession I am in in technology. And they deal with computer hardware engineer. So they research, design, develop, and test computer hardware. You have the computer scientist that studies computers and their use. You have the data analyst. And Ms. Bodine 
recently spoke about analytics and they are the persons who are responsible for generating those dashboards or those, you saw the, the, the actual image she show, showed you. They are the persons who are responsible for using data to generate those inf that information for persons like herself or anybody in business. Then you have the games designer. Anybody in here play games? Everybody. Everybody. Anybody just purchase or parents purchase because y'all ain't buying nothing. Um, the most recent game, how much it was, what, $9.99? How much the game was? Right. Yeah. yeah like $1,000, right? That's a lot of money, right? And y'all putting that in the pockets of the same person right here, the games designer. Have you ever thought about the actual behind the scenes, how games are generated? Have you ever thought about that? Are y'all only interested in playing? They like people like y'all. They make plenty of money as a games designer. Then you have the research analyst who is responsible for research. You have the software developer who is responsible for creating the software um, that you use, such as TikTok, um, other social media platforms, or in even Microsoft Office, or any other tool that you use. And then you have the web developer who is responsible for um, creating websites. And I'll speak specifically on my career, um, where I fall in this lineup afterwards. And then you have math. Yeah, everybody like, mm. But when people think of math, what do you think about? Like, what comes to mind? <laughs> all them things. Yeah, all of the, the big hard in your mind is very difficult stuff. And most people think of mathematicians as either a teacher or or somewhere along those um, lines. But you have an accountant. Anybody in here would like to be an accountant? No? All right, but that's still in the STEM profession. Most people don't think they fall in the STEM field. Then you have the actuary scientist, who is responsible for analyzing statistics and applying findings in insurance. How many of you ever heard of an actuary scientist? No, right? That is an actual career, and they earn very good money here. So they will work in insurance agencies like Family Guardian, um, BAF, and other insurance companies. They analyze data and statistics to be able to make decisions for the insurance agencies. Then you have the demographer who studies statistics relating to human population. Any of you have heard of Department of Statistics? So yeah, so you would have heard of the Department of Statistics, but they actually have an, a, a unit here at the Ministry of Res Education as well who would have somebody who would be doing the statistics. So they would say the amount of students who are enrolled in um, each school, the amount of students who are studying um, this particular program, um, the rate of kids that dropped out of school, all of that information, they, that's what they're responsible for. And then you have the financial analyst who looks at business finances to make investment decisions. Have you, how many of you have ever, ever heard of cryptocurrency, uh, trade, forex? You all learn about these things very early, which is good. But this person um, is responsible for analyzing that data as well to make those decisions to say, it, now is a good time to invest. Now is a good time for you to pull out pull your money from out your um, portfolio. This person is responsible for that. And then you have the statistician who kind of does the same thing, like I said, um, at the Department of Statistics. So based on that information alone, how many careers do you think this is? Hundreds. Huh. Hundreds. At least 100, right? So that means that there are many options available available to you for careers in science, technology, engineering, and math, also known as STEM. Okay, go to the next slide. So what are the future careers that will exist in STEM? So according to the uh, um, Career and Technical Education Cooperation, there are 16 STEM jobs of the future, and these are it, uh, the future may seem far for you guys, but the future is like right here. Most of you are in what, ninth grade? Yeah. That means you have three years before you complete, three to three and a half years before you complete senior high school. And you may not be thinking of a career right now, but it's very close, it's much closer than you think. Okay? So some of the future careers that they have listed is automated and robot system repair. So repairing robots. Green power creator. So basically, this is somebody who helped to generate clean, um, clean and renewable energy. So you have heard of like solar systems. Y'all heard of that before. So these are the persons who will be 
responsible for generating those types of power. Technology tutor and trainer, drone technician. Anybody have a drone? Everybody heard of a drone before? You only have no drones yet. You have a drone? I need a any link up with you because you have everything in the corner here. But these persons as well are coming up on the rise in terms of career professions. People ne who need to be able to operate them and also be able to repair them. Instastellar Insta city planner. Okay, this might seem a little far-fetched, right? But when Donald Trump was in power, what was one of the things, or as president, sorry, what was one of the things that he was trying to do? <laughs> well, besides building the wall. <laughs> He was trying to build an armed forces, armed force for the space. Anybody ever ever heard of Jeff Bezos? Anybody heard of the man who created the Tesla car? Tesla. Elon, Elon, Tesla, Elon Musk. Yes. So most recently, um, Jeff Bezos also did a expedition into space, and it may seem far fetched, but very soon. This will become a career because they are trying to explore how they can get life into space, human life into space. Then you have future farmers, and these people are basically responsible for um, planning out future production of agriculture and farming. Then you, ha um, you would have the 3D printing engineer. Who have heard of 3D printing before? the hands in the back good so these are the persons who are who are going to learn how to utilize those machines create those machines and repair those machines then you have your data managers the same same category as what I was telling you before people who are responsible for generating data then you have the self car engineer anybody heard of the self driving car yeah. yeah so you know these things exist now Right, and they will soon need people to know how to create these these same types of cars and also repair these types of cars. Then you have the trash and recyclables construction specialists. Now, some of you guys, when you think of garbage and your your garbage man, y'all don't. What do y'all think? What do y'all think of them? Or oh, y'all don't think of them at all, right? Most of the time, stay in the back of y'all mind, right? But this is this particular career is very important because. Who remembered the four fires uh, from the dump? Y'all yeah. yeah. remember that, right? Y'all remember how it impacted the people around you? Can't be able to breed properly and all that stuff. Without proper um, f management of the of your waste, we will be in a very serious health crisis. And not only that, because of the location of our island and it being very small, if this is not managed properly, you would soon see. Not only fires, but mosquitoes, um, d ad additional diseases, and on top of that, space running out from being able to um, manage our waste in that landfill. So these careers are very necessary and lucrative as well. Then you have forensic scientists, technician. Anybody know what a forensic scientist is? Y'all ever have CSI, SCU? Oh, yeah. yeah, those so those people are responsible for solving. Um, crimes or any death related um, activities. They use science to discover the cause of death and all that information. Then you have drone technicians, biomedical engineer, computer science systems administrator, software developer. One question before I move on. Any of, of you know that we have forensic scientists in country or do you think we have forensic scientists in country? Do you know most of them are females? Yeah, we have a very strong forensic scientist team, and most of the females even examine the guns for that are used in crime. So just wanted to point that out. All right, let's, uh, let's go on to the next. So um, I just want to quickly say what I do. So essentially, I'm an IT business analyst, and that was not listed there, but this is one of the careers that are very necessary as of today in government. And what essentially we do, most people don't understand tech language. Anybody in here on technology? Yeah, so with technology and software developers and people in technology, they kind of speak a different language than the average person. So when I'm talking about an API, Ms. Colbrook or somebody else looking at me like, what you talking about, right? So what we do as an IT business an analyst is translate what the technology people are saying 
to pr the regular pr average persons, we document that and say, hey, what basically he wants to know is, do you need something that will be able to connect these two systems together? And there are very few people who have that profession in this country, and essentially that's what we do. And there are a number of opportunities that exist and how you can actually go ahead and do that, uh, but I'll talk about that at the end. But essentially, I'm a, well, I am, <laughs> it's funny because I am a, was also an employee here, but essentially what we do is work on a platform called mygateway.gov.bs, which essentially is um, the government's website or service that provides you as a citizen to be able to access their services online. How many of you heard of my gateway? What? Okay, good stuff. So essentially that's what we do and that's the team I work on. And the great thing about it is that majority, about maybe 99% of the persons working there are all bohemians. So the people who create this system are bohemian developers. Usually that would have been outsourced to an international company where the government spends millions of dollars to develop these systems. But we have saved our country a lot of money by being able to build this application in-house. And it could be done, like I said, and it is done by behemoths. So on our team, we have myself, which is an IT business analyst. We have project managers. We have software developers. We have cybersecurity experts. Anybody of you ever heard of cybersecurity? Okay, so essentially that person makes sure that you are not, your data is not breached and, um, and that you're safe online. Anybody have been hacked before? Anybody being catfish? Yeah. All right, so essentially those persons help to prevent you from being hacked and your data and your information being shared and, and stored. So that's essentially some of the team members that we have. Um, you can go to the next slide. And if you want to know more about My Gateway, you just could go to on mygateway.gov.bs to find out about the services and what we have to offer. So how to prepare for careers in STEM. Now, the reason why this is important is because fewer than 40% of children, and this is US-based, and I'm sure it's much less than in the Bahamas, fewer than 40% of students who enter college um, intending to, to major in STEM fields um, complete STEM degree. And the whole purpose of the reason why I'm mentioning is this is because most children and most persons who are entering into college, the reason why you don't enter STEM or the, the reason why the percentage is low is because you don't know what um, options you have available to you, right? Most of you have never heard of some of those professions I listed before, right? But if you were to be aware of those options and to see how it could apply to what you like to do, wouldn't you be more interested in actually pursuing that as an option? Yes, so the reason why the retention rate is so low is because first of all, they don't know that it exists. Well, first of all, they, they, I wouldn't even say the retention rate. The reason why they don't even enroll in the first place is because they don't know it exists. And then the reason why is the, ret um, the retention rate is so low is because once you get into it, it's not something originally you or you thought you wanted to do, you just basically enrolled in the wrong program that exists for you. So we want to share this with you, first of all, so you could be aware of what options you have, and also so that once you get enrolled, you don't switch um, in the program that you originally was enro enrolled in. So I just want to give a quick survey, get a quick survey by a show of hands. Anybody um, interested in a career in science at all? Just one, two. I can go, yeah, engineering. It is a part of science, but it, I'll just speak specifically to science, science. So that's four people for science. Anybody in technology? One, two, three, four, five. Four, three, four. Okay, engineering? One. Math? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Two, two for engineering. Math? Not one. Look here. So <laughs> let me ask the rest of you because it was very, um, it's very interesting how I see the hands um, raised, and the uh, quick survey showed me that some of y'all feel like y'all ain't in STEM at all. Those who did not raise, raise your hand, what career that you are interested in, would you be interested in? Huh? Baking. Did you know, did you know food and nutrition is a science? 
is the science. Because if you don't know what chemicals or the right ingredients you are putting into your food, I mean, let's say the nutritionists, they study the science of, of food, then you could either make me sick, I could get fatter than I am now, it's important for you, like my son, he has an egg and peanut allergy. So all of that is still underneath the sciences. So you are in STEM. You are inter interested in something in STEM. Somebody else who raised their hand. Yeah, uh, oh. Maritime, yeah, man. You big time in, in STEM. And the reason why I, I skip over it, yeah, I skip over it, right? But maritime is one of the biggest careers in STEM. What exactly in maritime you want to do? Maritime transportation, so you want to be what, a boat captain? What do you want to, yeah, absolutely. That is in the STEM as well. Because first of all, you would have to learn about, when I, you have you ever heard of LJM Maritime Academy? Yeah, so that's a maritime school that is right behind, um, uh, is that Arawaki. But they have to learn about the weather patterns, meteorology. They have to learn about engineering, because they need to know about their boats. They have to learn about the fuel that is associated with their boats. They have to learn about navigation. All of that is STEM related. So STEM, once again, like I said, is everywhere. Because with any career that you choose to do, you are touching on an aspect that is related to STEM. Anybody in here want to be a beautician? So a cosmetologist? No? Anybody would like to be a makeup artist? Lip gloss, somebody said they want to make lip gloss. Absolutely in STEM, because you need to know about the chemical makeup of the lip gloss materials that you are um, producing or creating. You don't want to put something, me put something on my lip, then have my lips swell up like, <laughs> like blue fish. So all of that is rela relative to STEM. If you hear about Fenty Beauty, if you hear about Anastasia, all of those brands have a cosmetic chemist lab. And they are responsible for the actual chemical makeup or understanding the chemical compounds in these beauty-based items that is responsible for the person, you know, putting on their body. I can give you a quick story. Most recently, I, um, I asked the reason why I asked if anybody would like to be a hairstylist is because it's important for you to know the chemicals as well. I most recently put a black dye in my hair, and I can tell you that eat my hair right off. Hair... That's why I wear this wig. <laughs> <laughs> okay? My hair gap right up. Wow. It's important for you to know the chemicals that you are putting in on people's bodies and on your hair. And even if you're not a person in cosmetology, even if it, you're applying it on your own head, read the ingredients on the material for the materials that you're using on your bodies. Because that is very important, and like I said, all of that is relative to STEM. There is something called P, I think it was PCP or PHP or something like that, like that was an ingredient in the black dye that a lot of people are allergic to, and it swells up their face, it caused them to get rashes and scabs, and it essentially e basically eat up your hair. So it's important for you to know that, like I said, when you're pursuing any career that somehow STEM is involved, anybody else, we're saying, I know y'all, some of y'all just didn't know what y'all want to do yet. Y'all still trying to make up your own mind. Point being is, there are a lot of opportunities, and like I say, STEM is everywhere. So, oh, go back, sorry, I didn't say this. And I forget the video, so I don't so we don't need that. Um, so how do you prepare for careers in STEM? So you, first of all, get in contact with your guidance department. Any of you, well, I know school just reopened. But once you actually enroll, any of you ever went to guidance besides getting for getting in trouble? Every day, Every day you in guidance. <laughs> All right, that's good. So when you go to guidance, ask them what career or college opportunities exist for me. That is part of what their job is to do there, is to make you aware of the options that are available to you, right? With you consulting with them, they'll be able to tell you these are the options for you to study, these are the after-school programs that you can enroll in, and this is how you can get there. The second thing is do your research. A lot of you, I see all hands raised up, say y'all have WhatsApp. So that means y'all have a phone, and that means at least y'all have access to internet. Do your research. Google if there's anything you think you may be re remotely, um, re remotely interested in. 
Google that and see what career path or what options um, exist for that career path. Ask for internship. Ms. Bodian just said she have options for internship. Ask or apprenticeship, ask for internships or apprenticeships. If there's a company or even a person that you would like to be mentored by or an organization that you would like to, to be a part of, ask them if they have an internship program and see how you could shadow somebody to learn what it is that they do. Then visit college websites. So once you kind of have an idea of what you want, start to search for colleges that offer that program and visit their website, see what options they have existing. And pay attention in class. <laughs> pay attention in class. Honestly, some of the things with, and I, especially when I was in college, some of the things I really was just trying to pass. Because I know most of us, like, like especially y'all, because I will not. But most of y'all is like that. You're just trying to get in class, pass the class, and get out. But you need to pay attention because somebody, well, majority of these things, which you learn, it comes right back again. And you will see how it's applicable to your life and what it is that you want to do. And lastly, join an extracurricular program. And that's why I had the video there. So a part of what I do as, as well is I have a nonprofit organization that is called FemSTEM Bahamas, which basically is a youth-based organization for high school girls who are interested in science, technology, engineering, and math. And we expose you to careers in the science, technology, engineering, and math fields. So if there is another organization that or uh, club that you may be interested in, See how you can learn from that whole experience. You have technical cadets. I know it's kind of right now it's um, not operational, but once it resumes, this also is a very great option for persons who are entering into senior high school to join because they have a full program for males and females that expose you to opportunities in STEM. And that's, I was a recipi recipient of that program, and I would highly encourage you to be a part. Anyway, with that being said, that is it for me. I had my video for the organization, but you can't hear it. But that's it for me, and I would like to thank you all for listening. Thank you, Ms. Colbrook, for the invitation. And if you have any questions, please ask away. I'm right here. What is the organization that you uh, said just now? Um, technical Cadet Corps Program. Oh, yeah. So if you are, like I said, if you are male and female and you would like to enroll in a program that you would like to know about um, when it comes to STEM, Technical Cadets, I'm hoping it resumes so soon, but it is a three-year program that is offered by the government of the Bahamas, and it also, also offers scholarship opportuni opportunities at the end of the program. And then, like I said, you have Fem STEM for specifically for girls who are interested in, in STEM. I know there are other organizations like GGYA, um, what's that, the one Junior Achievers, that actually could still fall in line with STEM, except that some of them are more business and activity oriented, oriented. But join those programs because they also help to develop your skills. OK? Any other questions? No, that means I talk a lot of y'all hungry. Or <laughs> <laughs> uh, two. Will you have any questions from our Zoom? Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Okay.
you had somebody to design that, like literally draw that out and then put it on, on their computer system to illustrate that. So all of that as well are career opportunities, like I say, once again in, in STEM. So no questions? Okay, that means I guess I explained it well enough. Thank you very much. I am, um, thank you so much. I'm now going to call on Triana Wright from LW Young. Let's give her a round of applause as she comes. Ms. Clinton, on behalf of the Business Studies Unit, we present to you this small token. Thank you for talking to, thank you for taking the time to enlighten us about careers in STEM. It is indeed everywhere. Thank you, thank you, Mrs. Glinton, for sharing so much important information with us as it relates to the growing careers in STEM. We will now take a five minute break, after which we will have a special presentation.
Testing, testing, wonderful. All right. Welcome back. I hope you all had a wonderful first two sessions. And we are about to begin one of our final sessions. But before we get into that final session, there are some VIPs in this room. All right, we have some VIPs in this room, and we just wanted to take a special time out to recognize our teachers. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> 2020 through 2021 was indeed, I think, one of the hardest times for teachers in their entire career. Teachers, can I get an amen? amen. Trying to decipher the road to take in order to reach your children, this road was not easy. There were nights, and some are still dealing with nights of no sleep. Having lesson plans prepared, finding resources just to ensure that you are, are engaged and you do not lose focus of what you need in order for your education to take place. I thank you students who worked with your teachers. The work that they would have prepared for you placed on the LMS. Some um, went to different extents of using either Google Classroom. Some may have used Edmodo. Some even um, used Teams. They did whatever it took to get in contact with you. Today, I want to salute teachers of 2020, 2021, who have been outstanding either for their time of service in the business junior high school unit and also those teachers who would have done an excellent job keeping their students engaged and prepared as we moved through this COVID-19 period. At this time, I want to call on Ms. Teresa Walker. She is now the senior mistress at CV Bethel, and she is our former subject coordinator at AF Adley Junior High School. Ma, come, come help me in the back, please. Just a, or get one of the back. Get one. All right. The plaque creates appreciation award presented to Teresa Walker for outstanding and dedicated service to the Department of Education Business Junior Unit, Unit 2022. Thank you so much. The next person I'm going to call on is Ms. Keisha Ferguson from H.O. Nash. Come on down. She was set up to come here today. She didn't even know what was going on, and I'm glad. <laughs> come on. Yes, that's, that's, that's great. Yes, basket for two. It says, from Department of Education, Business Studies Junior Unit, Most Outstanding Business Studies Junior High Teacher Award presented to you, Keisha Ferguson. Thank you so much for your hard work.
I'm now going to call on Mistress Natasha Uris, subject coordinator for Essie McPherson. Come on down, come on down. Miss Uris was also named Teacher of the Month at Essie McPherson during the COVID-19 period. Endless work, and I could call on her anytime, and she always ensures that she produces excellent work. The Department of Education Business Junior Unit Most Outstanding Business Studies Junior High Teacher Award for presented to Natasha Uris 2022. Thank you. Thank you. Got it? Ye yes, Ms. Uriis, that's why you had to come. <laughs> she said, Ms. Colebrook, Ms. Roll is coming. I said, yes, but I need you to come too. She said, for true, I say yes. Sometimes you gotta swing down. <laughs> it's the next person. You know, she is a stalwart member. I call her a stalwart member because she won't she want leave. But anyhow, I now call on Miss Ginger Pickstock all the way from the Eagle City. All right. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> you, 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 you won't be mad at me, right? Okay, good. This, is, this serves as an appreciation award presented to Ginger Pickstock for outstanding and dedicated service to the Department of Education, Business Studies, Junior Unit 2022. Thank you. All right, see if I can stop this over. Thank you so much. I just want, Miss um, Pickstock, go ahead, that's, that's fine, that's fine. I'm talking about you, I'm talking about you. Miss Pickstock um, has been a leader for our computer studies curriculum team, and they ha are now completed. And we are about to do a launch next week, so let's give her a round of applause. We also have teachers in the room who are a part of the both computer and entrepreneurship um, curriculum teams, and all of them have done excellent work. They are the reasons why we are here and why we can do what we do in the classroom. They will ensure that we go a little bit higher. We're gonna take a next step further into our education, even if it's through the change of, of our learning platforms, or even the fact of going out um, into our communities and learning more from stakeholders, okay? I'm gonna call on Shamar this time. Uh, to continue his job of moderating. Yes. 
Chloe's mad. Corey Small is a 32-year-old chef and owner of Flavors Catering and the Bush Cook. Chef Small has a passion for food, but also client experience. Chef Corey studied at the College of the Bahamas, but he believes his best training has been working at various hotels, restaurants, and alongside some of the leading chefs in the country. Being a good chef is more is about more than just food. It's about arranging the right menu, meeting and exceeding clients' expectations, managing your kitchen and staff effectively, and ensuring your service makes every client feel special. Many would describe him as a humble and budding entrepreneur with contagious laugh and a generous spirit. He is hardworking and always eager to learn more about about his craft to enhance his business management skills daily. During his leisure time, he loves spelling, spending time with his wife, Desante Small, his family, travel, traveling and watching anything that makes him laugh. Being a proud graduate of, the, of Government High School, a product of Anglican community and coming from very humble beginnings, his goal is to show young Bohemians, especially young Bohemian men, that they can make it, that they can make it too. His best advice to anyone is to trust God and take risk and be willing to jump towards your dreams. You will make it. Put in the work. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. 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 No, I just bring a second. Gregory Cauley II is the founder and president of the Cookie Caterer, a cookie bakery with multiple locations in the Bahamas. Gregory was born on the island of New Providence in 1984 and has been a serial entrepreneur his whole life. Whether it was selling cups and baggies, frozen Kool Aid based treats to his neighbors as a child, or selling BlackBerry devices while working a full-time job. He was always looking for opportunities to fill much-needed voids. Like most Bohemians, he was always considered to be sweet mouth. Referring to his love for desserts and, and sweets, because of this, in late 2011, he went to Google to learn how to make cookies from scratch and started baking them at home to share with family and co-workers, who would often suggest that he sell them. After being fired from his full-time job in 2012, while he had a baby on the way, he saw it as an opportunity to follow through on those suggestions and created a Facebook page called The Cookie Caterer. Starting with only two flavors, delivery door to door, the, bu the business has grown to th three storefront locations selling more than 13 flavors and eight whipped ice cream flavors. Over the years, he has been featured multiple times on TV shows like Happy 242 and Chef It Up. He has been featured in both major newspapers, the Tribune and the Nassau Guardian, and also a guest on many of the popular talk radio talk shows. He also hosted two of his own podcasts, Entrepreneur to Entrepreneur and o Under the Rug. Between the years 2015 and 2018, Gregory also has a background in music. He was a music producer and vice president of Bahama Beast Music Group a group of vehement artists and producers who traveled across the United States competing in beat battles and other music competitions. His success can be tied to the model he crafted and edit every podcast or episode of WGE with, which is losers make excuses, winners make adjustments. Please let me welcome Mr. Gregory Carly II and president, president of the Cookie Caterer. Good afternoon once again to our viewing audience and to our studio audience. 
Thank you so much. I want to remind our audience, um, those who are watching from Zoom, please ensure we want your participation. So we would like for you to send your questions so that um, our presenters, so that our presenters will be able to answer your questions so that our presenters can answer your questions. So please, we would like for you to send, to send your questions in to us. Thank you, Mr. Small. Gentlemen, good afternoon. Good afternoon. I want you to do a mic desk, Mr. Small. Put it closer. Move. You can move the laptop. Yeah, yeah. Good. Okay. So we're in an informal situation. Yes, our students are here, but I need you all to bring it real today. All the time. All right. Bring it real, because you know they've been quiet a whole lot in here, mm -hmm. okay. and I, you know, I ain't like it. I, I, I don't like it. <laughs> so I need you all to bring it real and bring it home for them today. First question I want to ask is, why you decided to really go into business? Anyone can go. Um, well, um, like, like um, she said earlier, I was always, you know, I had the entrepreneurial spirit my entire life. Like I said, I used to sell cup and baggy. I know if they know what that is now. I don't know if they still got that around, but <laughs> I used to sell those things when I was young to neighborhood kids and stuff. Um, but I, I had a full-time job for 10 years, actually, and mm -hmm. what made me go into business and entrepreneurship full-time was that I was fired. Mm -hmm. And I was fired with a child on the way at that. Wow. And so that's what I was really pushed off of the cliff, and that was actually the best thing that ever happened to me. I want to say that was the, you know, one of the greatest things that happened to me in my life because it really forced me to you know, act on the entrepreneurial spirit and do it full time. Awesome, awesome. Mr. Small? Um, well, entrepreneurial spirit hit me by mistake. It was in, um, the bush hook was never planned. Okay. I didn't sit down with an accounting or a human resource person and be like, let me map out this plan. Um, it just happened on the spirit. Um, I was always the person who used to go and get money. I was always a hustler. <laughs> It was, uh, if money was there in the room, I was going to be a part of it. Now, back in my illegal days. But <laughs> now, I'm also in my illegal off days. Off the script, now. off the script. <laughs> hey, you say yeah. keep it real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, what ended up happening is that I was fortunate enough to, sorry, I was fortunate enough to get a contract in terms of doing a catering services. And my girlfriend, now my wife, was her, her family had a family building on Marky Street. I remember he used to go inside and cook the food. The scent used to go inside the community. Oh. And person used to come to the window and say, go on, I need to sell food, I need to sell food. I said, no, we ain't selling food, we just have this personal contract. Mm -hmm. At that time, I still was working. I was working for government. So pretty much I was moonlighting. Um, so I had a conversation with my boss at the time. And she was like, you cannot serve two masters. Mm -hmm. And the problem was that I was literally making money, but scratched out. So I would pretty much make money and then go right to the doctor's office because I had my pressure high, sick, mm -hmm. because I ran myself to the, to the ropes. Waking up 4 o'clock in the morning, knocking on the function, trying to get to work at 9, leaving at 5, stopping on my lunch break, make sure the orders are delivered, trying to get to the food store, talking to suppliers. Like, everything was happening in one day. So my 24 hours is like 48 hours in one day. With no, no assistant, no backup, wow. no nothing. So we had a conversation, and one thing that stuck to me was she said, she said, you cannot serve two masters. Mm -hmm. She said, the Bible speaks for that. Yes. And I decided to make a decision. So what ended up happening, just like him, I was fired. Um, but I wasn't fired in terms of on them. I actually resigned. Mm -hmm. What happened is that the HR department decided to send me a letter at the establishment. They found me. And they was like, you know what? We could give you the time off. We just need to pay you. And I just said, you know what? It, is, it ain't worth it. So, like, you you sleeping on penny, just trying to, cheat, sleeping on dollar, trying to chase a penny. Because mm -hmm. you know government job is secure. You want to make sure you have a salary day in a month. But um, June of this year would make, 
Joan of this year, I make six years. I've been establishing the bush cook by my own. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's been pretty decent for me. All right, thank you. Thank I you. hope you all listen to that story well. <laughs> yeah. That's plenty sacrifice, hmm. stress. Boy, yeah. It ain't, I ain't hear nobody say yet, man, this was so fun, <laughs> man, when I was getting this together. This was it. It took a lot of work. And protect. Hey. hey. <laughs> this is why you are my moderator. <laughs> <laughs> to get the job done. Now, 2020. I'm sorry for taking us back there. It's a nightmare for everybody. I think it was March. Yeah. Yep. March 16th. Mm -hmm. mm. <laughs> the competent authority comes out and say everything lock down. Mm -hmm. yep. What were three months? Oh boy, so much. Um, and I was actually I was just getting back on the island around that time. Um, I got back, I think, right before everything started to shut down. But we had um, two locations at that time. And at that point, my mind immediately went to staff. You know what I mean? Because my staff always comes first. I want to make sure that that's all healthy. So um, when he first announced it, I mean, at that point, there's not really much you can do but to wait and see what other decisions are made so you know how you can move and operate. Um, and so we just had to stay home, you know, we had to follow the orders. But luckily uh, for us, we were in the food industry. And so we were allowed after that initial lockdown period to at least partially operate, you know. Um, they had a curfew and so you had to cut your hours down. But, you know, we were, like I said, we were fortunate because there are many businesses that couldn't operate at all. They were closed for more than a year. Mm -hmm. And so I don't take that for granted. You know, I appreciate that we were still able to operate. Although it was rough, we were still able to at least, you know, keep our head above water and, you know, pay the bills. What we decided to do was we had to close down one of our locations because it was in the Palmdale area mm -hmm. and everything was basically closed in that area. And mm -hmm. so it didn't make sense having that one open. Carmichael had more traffic and so we decided to just operate out of Carmichael and mostly focus on deliveries. Mm -hmm. People would still walk in, but we mainly focus on deliveries because you know most people had to stay home. Mm -hmm. And so it was a pivot and that's what you have to do as an entrepreneur. You know, things are gonna change. Um, S certain stuff that you may not foresee are going to take place, but you have to be ready to make the decisions to pivot and make the necessary adjustments in order to survive. Yeah, and yeah. so that's what we had to do. Um, March was, I would say, well, most people know that the COVID crisis really affect the restaurants. Mm -hmm. If you look over the world, most restaurants are closing now. Employees were being let go, furlough, and that's still to the day. Like I was in Vegas on Vegas of Christmas. I spent the other people in Vegas, and everybody is hiring in Vegas, and mostly there's restaurants. They're trying to find first because they're now getting back up, up and running. Mm -hmm. um, it was no secret. It was nothing different from us in Bahamas, but for thankfully, um, the fast food industry was able to keep its head above water. Um, we actually took on staff during oh. COVID. Awesome. A lot of my friends who were furloughed from the hotel, they was looking for hours here and there, and we picked them up because at that time, as I said, you couldn't get persons inside. So persons want to get served, mm -hmm. they want to get served quick. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you couldn't have the crowd inside, you couldn't have persons just sitting down waiting. So we, we, we got creative. We started doing, we made up a drive through well, <laughs> a drive through <laughs> <laughs> um, We did deliveries, mm -hmm. we established different food ops, um, we communicated, we partnered with a lot of delivery companies. Like every, everywhere we could have made it, the hustle mentality came back. Yes. And that's what you had to do. Like we had to get creative. We had to open up in the morning. We was actually making lunch in the morning mm -hmm. just to be able to maximize the hours. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we had to just get creative. And that's what you do as an entrepreneur. You want to get creative. You cannot, like a Monday is not a regular Monday in entrepreneur day. Right. You have to keep on it. Um, the competent authority, God bless us all. Um, I think <laughs> the most hateful where we heard during that whole time as my fellow Bahamians. My <laughs> fellow Bahamians <laughs> yeah, and so, residents. Um, that was one of the things to us, but we, we, were, we were okay. I think what was the most 
hard for us was the month of August because everything was yeah. shut down for the yeah. entire month of August. Yeah. Yeah. And I actually got married the last month in July. The last week in July. So that's I went to the month. That's my birthday. You have blessings. You have blessings. You know, that's my birthday month. So you are blessed. Okay, me too. <laughs> <laughs> I went straight into a lockdown. Newlywed. Wow. Um, I guess I, all I said is that the former prime minister would have been godfather. <laughs> when it didn't happen. <laughs> but other than that, we were, we were okay. We didn't. It wasn't. It's just that the bills kept coming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was the issue for me is that all of the conversation that we're having, all of the dialogue, where there's nothing about the bills just kept mm -hmm. coming. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, BPI was a little lenient. Wallen so was just lenient. But the landlords, the insurance agents, those were the side say, you don't have to pay, but this is a bill could be here. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't no it was no easing up on that. Mm -hmm. And and some businesses are still trying to dig out that ditch. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, we're we actually one who's still trying to dig out because, like you said, the bills kept coming. You know, we have a bunch of rent to pay, yep. uh, utilities, and so we actually had to go to the uh, small business development center mm -hmm. and take out a loan because, like I said, um, staff comes first, and I wanted to make mm -hmm. sure, like you said, in August, mm -hmm. basically the entire month zero revenue. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. but I wanted to make sure the staff was still paid, and so I actually went out and took out a loan so that we could, you know, continue to pay our bills and pay our staff during that period. With you mentioning the small business development organization. Um, would you refer other entrepreneurs to them as, as a means of, of some sense of restoration? Yes, most, most definitely. Um, now, the thing is, with that, you know, of course, it's government, so you've got to be patient. Um, yes. And, you know, be, patience ain't behemoth's best, you know, mm. suit. So you have to be patient, but I would recommend it because we've benefited uh, from it greatly. Yes. Um, when I first went to the SBDC, it was in, I think it was 2018, if I'm not mistaken. And the we got funding, and that um, enabled us to open our Camichael location. Okay. We got the capital funds to open Camichael. And then when I went back, um, like I said, to get another loan to pay our staff, we actually had enough to open our Prince Charles location at the end of 2020. Mm -hmm. And so I would definitely recommend it to entrepreneurs because, you know, Capital is the toughest thing to get as an yes, entrepreneur. Yes. Money is the number. You ask any entrepreneur what's the biggest issue, they can tell you money. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I would recommend it because there, there is funding there, but you just have to be patient and you have to go through the process. Um, and a lot of people don't want to do it. And so you see a lot of people bashing it or whatever, but they just didn't want to go through the entire process um, that's required in order for you to get funding. Yeah. Okay, excellent, excellent. Um, the pivot has been... Uh, a captivating word that I heard from both of you. Mm -hmm. You have to know how to make that move. You have to know when to let things go mm -hmm. because Mr. Carly said, you know, you had to let a, a store location go because the money wasn't making. Mm -hmm. So all of these, these things are important for us to understand as business students. We can start off with something Small, but it doesn't mean that you have to give up. You have to now reinvent yourself. Mm -hmm. I heard Mr. Small talk about creating a drive through when he didn't have a drive through Exactly. <laughs> I know some persons who, who were selling food. They were selling food out of their homes, yeah. mm -hmm. especially if they worked in the hotels. Mm -hmm. They started uh, um, cooking from home, and as long as uh, not one thing but a bohemian, mm -hmm. they like their belly. Of course. <laughs> Food will sell, mm -hmm. if especially, it's good, if it's good, if and I'm going to say, yeah, especially yeah, yeah, yeah. good it. food, mm -hmm. good food. So, in as now coming out of the pandemic, gas prices are rising. You both cook. You're making deliveries, so that's cooking gas going up, petrol going up. I need an electrical car, somebody. <laughs> Every time you go into the food store, my mother is in the room somewhere, and I was shopping for this event. And I told her, I can't buy a $7 container of mayonnaise. <laughs> <laughs> I tell her I can't do it. Mm -hmm. How are you all <laughs> dealing with these challenges now. Boy, look at you. You mentioned gas, but the, I think the bigger issue, 
and I don't know if Corey would agree, but it would be the supplies. Mm -hmm. The supply chain issue that's happening right now is a major issue. Yes. Because one, you can't get all the items that you need in time, and two, when you can't get them, they're ridiculously expensive. Mm -hmm. Every single thing has gone up. Guarantee you, and not by a little bit of percent. I'm talking 30, 40 percent, some, some things. Yes. And, and it continues, it's like almost every other week, you go back to your wholesaler, and, and it's a higher price again. Wow. It just continues to raise, and it's like, the toughest part is you have to adjust your menu because you know, you're paying more for everything now. Mm -hmm. And so when you raise your price, your customers wonder, well, why are you going up higher? But if, if we don't, we go out of business. Yes. Because yes. everything is just so expensive. And so um, it's really not much you can do, but to try and source your supplies and materials uh, for the best price possible mm -hmm. and try to get them on time. But in certain uh, circumstances, there's really not much you can do but to wait until the wholesaler gets it and pay the price that you know they require you to pay for it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I remember in the, in the Christmas, there was a shortage of, what it was, Korean? Heavy Korean, heavy Korean, I know it very well. Mm -hmm. And I know Mr. Small I must make mm -hmm. bad pasta. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one good fettuccine. How, you all, how, how are you dealing with, with issues like that? Um, well, when, you, when operating a business, you have to be able to think global. So one thing I do in the morning, every morning is watch your news, world okay. news. So it wasn't nothing that shocked me when it was coming because I saw it. Mm -hmm. I saw it sign the trend. I watched the stock market, saw what was happening, then the elections happened too. So during the elections, there's always that trend. Um, so I saw it was trending. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the things that we did to me answer the pasta question is that we went, we went to, the fun, fun, to the fundamentals. Okay. We started making our pasta from scratch. Uh. So we cut costs, so we, we, I couldn't rely my business on a supplier mm -hmm. because they have a business and I have a business. So if they don't have it, they don't have it. I can't tell my customer that I don't have it. Right. So we started making our pasta from scratch. Mm -hmm. So it was like the cream, the bechamel sauce, we did those from scratch. Getting tomatoes, puree in them, we did that. Mm -hmm. um, but regards to the pricing of it is that the Bahamas in general is expensive. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. From the time of, I have never been in a cheap Bahamas. I don't know this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> the people say they go in the food store and get fifty dollars. They could come with a full. I have never, never. experienced that. Mm -hmm. never. So I can't speak to that. So mm -hmm. I've always knew the Bahamas to be expensive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now when I go away, I, I'm baffled at prices and say, "Well, Jesus, I need to open a business over here." Mm -hmm. But that's another story here and there. <laughs> but the Bahamas to me is just that we're, we're we don't have anything to be cheap. We, mm -hmm. we export, we bring in everything, we have to pay for everything, we, we, we follow. Yes. So what we did just yesterday, we would have launched our new menu to ensure that products will always be there. Because what we notice is that when, when a customer comes inside a shop, they say, we don't have this, we don't have that, it's a turn off. Mm -hmm. They say, anyway, let me just go someplace else. Mm -hmm. So now what we did was that we cut our menu, not cut it, but we redesign it, whereas we're always going to have products inside the shop. Okay. So it's never going to be a moment where we don't have this and we don't have that. Mm -hmm. So we studied the market, we studied the stores, we saw what was always on the shelf, and we created our menu. Okay. So we, we can be almost 80% certain right now that we're not going to run on anything. Awesome. So a part of being in business is studying. Mm -hmm. I mean, I never was like studying in school. Sure. So judge now. So <laughs> it's just being able to know. But it comes with... It comes with being able to survive. Yes. Like you have to be able to hustle. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, it's all about making that bread, making that money. And customers are only gonna come to you as long as they know, hey, because yesterday our prices were, were increased, mm -hmm. but no customer complained because the product was, damn, that's good, mm -hmm. you know? So that's mm -hmm. what we did, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I, er, one menu that always stands out. Uh, oh, so much. <laughs> you know, <laughs> when when certain people I can call their name, they all built in this room. When they heard that the bush cook was coming, <laughs> I said I made Mr. Small laugh. The minute I um, presented to my teachers that Mr. Small was one of the speakers, oh, is he making up a menu just for us? <laughs> <laughs> Cookie Kero, I noticed as well, he's been doing some, some, some things now with his cookies. He's, I just frequent in there. Don't worry about this. Don't worry about this. <laughs> and it's frequent in there. And so I was one of those persons who walked into the store and I saw the price increase. Mm -hmm. And I, I couldn't complain because, like you said, mm -hmm. because of what's going on globally, mm -hmm. 
If I go to the food store, everything going up. So I went with you going to the food store. I know things are going to be at a at a higher price. Mm -hmm. So that is something that we also have to take under um, our whole perception of being an entrepreneur. Because there are times when you might have to take a loss. Mm -hmm. You may have to take a loss when just to ensure that hey, guess what? We're not going to go down. We're not going to go under. Mm -hmm. But this is what we have to do in order to stay Open. level. Mm -hmm. What, um, what drives you to change your menu every week, Mr. Small? Um, or your specials every week? I've always been a creative person, mm -hmm. even in, in my life. You know, so, <laughs> but it's just that people, Bahamians, mm -hmm. and I feel it's with me too. I don't like to eat the same thing over and over. I don't. I mean, some of my menu items don't even sell, but it's just a matter of fact that the conversation of Bushcook is on social media. Mm -hmm. So that's someone else tapping in and saying, "What this all about? Mm -hmm. What this? What do you do?" So they go into the page, they see, what, "Oh, I could actually go there for food." So it's not more so the menu. Is more so the conversation that trend, right? Because right. I could post a burger. That's just I post. We, the most recent one was a Dubai burger. <laughs> <laughs> when there was a conversation so much about Dubai and all this stuff, right? And then when we did a twist, and we, a, a lot of persons were mad. And so we say, hey, the first twenty customers get a free bag of salty. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so that was like a conversation on the stuff. So we had about one point three shares, mm -hmm. thousand. Wow. So that's, uh, and then all of that thousand shares, they, they share it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we were trending. We have about 50,000 followers on Facebook. Remember what Miss Johnson talked about this morning? Mm -hmm. That's yeah. it. Get the hashtag in. Yeah. You see where all of this connected? All right. So what we did is that we, but my, my wife actually runs my marketing team, okay. and she's a marketing guru. Mm -hmm. And yep. she knows, she knows like the math of Facebook. She knows when to post, when you shouldn't post, what to post, how to post. Like, you don't post in the evening. Most persons are winding down. They're not going to eat. Mm -hmm. But right before lunch, in the middle of lunch, you post. Mm -hmm. So there are certain mods to social media. There are certain mods to business. Mm -hmm. So you have to understand what are you doing. Like, I'm just a creator for, I guess, come up with the, the slang. I, if it was the <laughs> there were other things that I wanted to come up with, but I couldn't. <laughs> 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 but... They're, they're, they're just being able to stay creative. You have to stay on it. You have to stay on the tip in the minds of people. Because being people, we forget. Like yeah. We say, man, I was supposed to Let me just go somebody else in. But if you stay trending, if you stay in the topic, if you stay in their phones, you stay in their minds, they're going to support you. Mm -hmm. Now, behind that support, you have, have to be able to deliver a good product. Yes. yes. You just scan, because that same good support could turn into negativity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we do have that as well. We're not gonna, I'm not going to sign there and say we have the most perfect restaurant. All of our food is excellent, but we we always listen to our customers. If they say, "Hey, this need to change. I need to change." Good. Conversation we do. Um, I'm very. I'm always in my business, so I'm just. Hey, I need to see the boss. I come into the front. I even engage with my customers. Sometimes I cash, mm -hmm. just to see what the feedback is in the front, because most persons, some persons don't know who I am. Mm -hmm. So I stay in the front. I sit down. I cash. Sometimes I even pay security. I stand at the open door, um, closed door. Mm -hmm. I might go run and get ours. I mop floor. I do everything. Because I stay where the customers are, the hair was happening on the ground. Mm -hmm. Good, good. And stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Good. We're about to wind down, so get your questions together. My last question to you gentlemen. Where do you see yourself and your business in the next five years? <laughs> next five years are uh, hopefully uh, global. Um, we have at least another location I'd like to open in New Providence, um, mm -hmm. and then um, in Freeport soon. Where are all of your locations? Um, Carmichael Road, uh, mm -hmm. at the junction of the um, Tony Williams Highway and Carmichael Road. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, not Tony, Milo Butler Highway. Oh. Milo Butler Highway and Carmichael oh. Road. Um, Mount Royal Avenue. Okay. Um, that one, like that's I said, it was. Spot. That's yeah, my that's my yeah, spot. used to be in the area plenty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, our most recent one is Prince Charles, that's in the Carrier's Plaza. Almost right opposite Doris Johnson mm -hmm. is um, where our live and Papa John's used to be, oh, uh, okay. right by the Kenneth Food Store is. Okay. Yeah, so those are the three locations we have so far in New Providence. Um, but like like Corey said, you know, when we when I go to the states too and see the prices, I like listen, I need a business over here too, mm -hmm. and so that's the goal. The next five years, hopefully, to have some locations in the U.S. Mm -hmm. and then who knows um, beyond that. 
across the world. Any yeah. any any family island might get a little hmm. piece of. We'll think about it. <laughs> we'll think about it. When I say Freeport, you all don't consider that family island, eh? No. You all don't consider no. that family island? Let me not say, hi, Freeport people, you <laughs> know what I mean? That. Love well, you, you know, You know what? Love um, I, I was told that Exuma is booming now. Ah. Uh, especially uh, with tourists. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Exuma is, is really booming. So mm -hmm. I started to, you know, I'm going to look into Exuma. I've been there a long time. Mm -hmm. I used to be down there all the time. Mm -hmm. But I have to make another trip to, you know, get a feel for what's happening now. That's so, awesome. yeah, Family Island, Exuma, possibly. Yes, yeah. yes. Let's, let's give our Family Island people something to talk about. Yeah, man, for sure. Yes. Mr. Small? Um, most certainly. Um, there was a conversation brewing for some international locations, mm -hmm. um, but we have to make sure that we're prepared for that. Yes. Um, one thing we don't want to do is discourage a brand. Um, we want to be a brand, a branded um, in company. So we're, we're, we're in talks with a lot of first. Everybody wants to do it, but you know, we just have to make sure it's right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, the Vegas trip wasn't just a Vegas trip. It was something a long business. Mm -hmm. okay. um, of course, there was the Miami conversation. Um, we actually just visited Freeport two weeks ago. Okay. So we're, we're, we're looking at options. Mm -hmm. We just want to make the best decision. Because what we don't want to do is present a product to the world yes. that is not what persons expect. Mm -hmm. So we can't carry the full experience. We're not going to do it alone. Right. Excellent, yeah. excellent. Mm -hmm. Let's give our panelists a round of applause. <laughs> no script. You all see no script. I ain't got no script. <laughs> they don't even know what I was going to ask them today. But this is, the, this is what I meant by having, let's have a conversation. Mm -hmm. All right. So one of our questions is coming in from Mrs. King Webb. She's a business studies teacher <laughs> all the way in Arthur's Town, Cat Island. Oh. All right. Love Cat Island. She said, what advice would you give to Family Island students who would like to be entrepreneurs? You want to take that one, Gory? <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've had experience in the family island, mm -hmm. and the family island is a, it's a big difference from family island in Nassau. So more now than ever, we are exposed to the world by a touch of a keyboard. Mm -hmm. So don't, if you, the world is your oyster, a person's going to say. So you have to get the experience. Um, family island life and Nassau life and entrepreneurial life is, a t is three different lives. Yes. So you have to be able to be open. You have to be able to know that, hey, what you have in front of you is just not the end. And whenever you, whenever you start a business, think global. Think in the next 10, 15 years, if this business can be able to be in the world stage, yes. getting investors, think global. Yes. And pretty much I'll be about it. All right. Awesome. Any other questions from our... Studio audience. Mm, I see a hand that's mm -hmm. um, L.W. Young. Could you stand, please? Oh. Can I call? Did anyone offer to support your business, or did you have to hustle? You always have the hustle. <laughs> and the odd thing, and I don't know if it's the same for Corey, but especially in the Bahamas, is the odd thing is you would find support in areas that you don't always expect. Um, unfortunately, a lot of times you may experience some of the closest people to you may not be uh, supportive. Some of your family, some of your closest friends. Because you know, they always, a lot of them are always looking for things for free. One, a lot of them don't believe you in the first place. Mm -hmm. And the ones that kind of do, they're looking for something for free. And so a lot of the support that you may receive may come from outside of your immediate circle. And so it's upon you to always hustle and don't, don't you know, get hard feelings if people don't support you in the beginning, especially your friends and family. Don't worry about them. If you know you have something to offer and it's great, you continue to do it and you seek to get it to those that will appreciate it and pay for it. Um, yeah, when, when, when you're drafting your business, Draft as, draft it as if you have no money, don't, and you have no support. If you feel as if oh my mommy could listen to me or my daddy could take care, of, ain't happening, because everyone is gonna think that you're making money. Mm 
Mm-hmm. Regardless, of, and you are you would be making some money, but then you take care of bills first and all of the other stuff. You pretty much barely left with anything in your pocket. So, um, for good thing about it now, I didn't have it when I was coming up. Is that there are a lot of SDBC? There's a com- there's Bank of the Bahamas. They do loans now, so there's a lot of other loan factors. But I I am one that speaks against loans. I don't really believe in loans. But now as I grow and I understand the importance of it, mm-hmm. and yeah. But I had to hustle for my money. I actually started my first business with my last paycheck, and that was it. Wow. And I just grew from there. How, how did you decide what your, what you, or, sorry, sorry. How did you decide what your menu was going to be? Like, what type of cookies you wanted to have, and what type of food you wanted to sell? Um... Well, initially, you have to start with what you, you know, could afford to do. Um, so a lot of times, what gets people is they want to start so big. Um, we started very small. It was just me and, you know, I, I didn't go to school or anything like that. So I just went to Google University, um, saw a couple of recipes, <laughs> and I actually started with two flavors, chocolate chip and oatmeal raisin. And I just knew that um, where I used to buy cookies from, that's what they used to have. And so I said, let me start with those two. And just started to add like stuff like s'mores, right? I, I said s'mores. I never had s'mores personally, believe it or not, like the actual graham cracker chocolate and marshmallow. But I see a lot of people, you know, like to consume yeah. those. So I said that would be a cool cookie. And then um, the following um, Valentine's, after we started, I was like, I've never seen a red velvet cookie. I'll try that. And so it's just it, motivation comes in different ways and different forms. Um, like our stuffed cookies, that was actually one of our employees, the first baker I hired. He just, he went in the back, because he bakes cakes, and he went in the back, he just made this guava cheesecake cookie and brought it out, and wow. I was blown away by it. And so I was like, this going on the menu tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And so it comes from very different areas. It's not always me. Um, sometimes it may come from my sister, it may come from an employee, it may come from a uh, fan suggestion, uh, not fan, sorry, uh, customer suggestions. Um, someone, I always was thinking about coconut tart. And I'll say, that would be a cool cookie. And then when I saw someone comment and say, you all need to do a coconut tart cookie, I say, well, there you go. We got to figure out how to do it. And so it comes from many different areas. Um, Sometimes you have the inspiration to do a particular flavor, or sometimes someone else suggests something and it makes sense, so you do it. Awesome. Um, Well, there's a combination of ideas on my menu part. But some of the menus were items that I normally had private clients, and I used to make dishes for them. And I wonder how I can make this affordable for the average man to purchase. And then one of the one of the driving force of my menu too was just being creative. Like I had a burger on my menu. Um, I had a burger one time ago on my menu called the Beast Burger, which is pork chop bacon and Angus beef. And the name came from Barack Obama limousine was called the Beast. So I just named it after that. So just playing with the names and stuff like that. Okay, um, what are y'all productivity rates? Mm. Oh, that's a smart one. <laughs> 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 I, I'm not trying to be like kind of like yeah. nosy, but I just like kind of wondering. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, what you mean by productivity yeah, rates I, I, in terms I, I, of? You, you, um, you want to elaborate on that? What exactly you. Yeah, yeah. Productivity rate is as in like the income and how um, oh, wow. how y'all products come from imports okay. and different types of industries. Okay. So repeat that again. <laughs> <laughs> like where? You gotta you gotta break it down. We haven't been yeah. to business school. But you gotta <laughs> keep it simple. Okay, like where like the products come from, and then like how are y'all just like trying to bring them in every like how many times a week or how long? So how often do you have a yeah. products? Oh. I think it's what she's trying to ask. Oh, okay. Um, well, gee, we ordering things every day. Um, some things, especially now with this um, supply shortage, some things we have to bring in from the U.S. because I don't know what it is with wholesalers in Nassau, but they tend to run out of things quite often, and they out for a while, and then when you ask, well, when you all have it, they like, I don't know when we have it. And so we have to... Um, source a lot of our materials from um, companies in the U.S. 
Um, there's a particular um, website that I get a lot of our supplies from, but we, we order things all the time. We run through a whole lot of flour, sugar, all those things, so it's like almost every day we order in a bunch of stuff. Uh, luckily, I give my sister that headache. That's my operations manager now, so she does all the purchasing and all of that stuff. So she would have a better idea of all the numbers, how often, how much things cost. Um, I don't do that anymore because, I mean, when uh, Corey was speaking earlier, I almost break out the tambourine when he was talking about the stress from, you know, trying to do so much. And so I had to, you know, delegate certain uh, tasks, tasks to people to handle. So um, she would have a better idea, but we, we order things all the time. Well, shopping for us is also every day. One of the reasons why, because of storage. Um, and to invest in a walk-in cooler, a walk-in freezer, is, is expensive. But also, because of our current electricity problem in the Bahamas, like you would walk in the day, you could purchase almost about $5,000 worth of inventory and walk in tomorrow and you're spoiled. And it has happened. Um, it has happened to me okay. before in terms of dealing with functions. Um, walk in the next day, the ice carbon is melted away, f seafood spoiled, and the conversation is the so the power the company is okay, <laughs> put in a report, put in a compla cl um, claim, but I think we get it. So, um, because th like dry goods, like if you look at most restaurants, like the big boys, like Checkers and other places, they, they probably bulk up on dry goods flour, sugar, salt, seasoning, but meats are pretty much purchased every day. Um, seafood pretty much every day because you don't want to take on the headache from the general business about that. So that's something that's done purchasing every day. Okay, um, seeing that there's a lot of things that can go wrong while it's being an entrepreneur, do you still like recommend? A, ch a student to be an entrepreneur? Mm. <laughs> um, I actually just crack a joke with one, with one of my employees um, the other day, and I said, listen to me, y'all. Let me give you a secret. Work for people as long as you can work for them. Right? And I said it because sometimes every day is not a good day. Every day is not a good day. And I, I'm telling you from experience, I'm telling you as simple as just dealing with business, and business on the whole is difficult. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it ain't so much a business, it's probably the person's involved in the business, like customer service and trying to be number one and just trying to stay on ground. And it's just a lot to deal with sometimes. But I'll always encourage any young person, now more than ever, to go in there and find your one. Find your one. And I would say only do it if it's in you, if it's something that you are driven and determined to do. Don't do it because it seems cool or it, you think you can make a bunch of money and you see other people doing it so you want to do it. Only if it's in you. You have to have that in you to do it because look here, it could be some rough times and that's, that's going to be the only thing that has, that's going to get you through those times is if that's the driving the die. Like, like I said, I always knew this, what I want to do. Like I would have decent jobs, but it's always something in the back of me that just didn't feel right just working for people. It's just, it's just, it just wasn't in me to work for people. And so if, if it's the same for you, then I would recommend it. If not, then I wouldn't. And there's nothing wrong with working for people because we have to hire people. We need right. people to work. So it's, it, every, every role is important. There's nothing wrong with working for somebody. So don't do it just because it seems to be a cool thing to do. Do it if it's really driving you and if it's something you're really passionate about and want to do. My question is, what's the story behind you guys' business name? Ah, oh, I, I nice, would, nice question. I like that question. Uh, Are you sure this one be more interesting than mine? <laughs> oh, no, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, the story behind my business name. Talking to the mic, talking to um, the mic. Okay, my girlfriend at that time, not my wife, uh -huh. we were, we used to, um, I used to do like sign up after work. So there was, I don't know if you guys heard, but flag football. Mm -hmm. um, we were applying for the grill, to do the grill out there. And my wife was always like, you just can't go out there and to put on this um, postcard or you gotta do graphics, you gotta do this, you gotta do that. And I'd like, man, whatever. I mean, let's figure it oh, out. She's like, so we have a couple names. She say, I say, well, anyway, I say, what I said, I say, I said something. And she said, the bush cut. I say, what? She said, the bush cook. I said, okay. Because what happened is that when I used to work in the Hilton, 
when I used to work the night shift at the Hilton, I used to mess up a lot of food. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the, waiter, the waiter, wait, waiters and waitresses at that time used to call me the bush cook. <laughs> say, bush cook, what you saying? Because they know I could mess up something. Wow. But then as wow. I grew, I started to get better. So even when she's with me and they would see me, they say, man, but bush cook, eh? Bush cook blowing up now. So that's where she remembered the name from. And she just threw it on the table. And then when she threw it on the table, it just... Went from there, and that was that stick, and that was that. All right. See, I, I tell you, his one could be more interesting than mine. I ain't gonna be long at all. I was when I went to start. Initially, I was just thinking about you know providing cookies for weddings, baby showers, events, catering cookies to people. So it was the cookie caterer. Mm -hmm. That's it. No kind of no long, <laughs> long backstory to it. That was it. That's very simple. <laughs> all right. Did you guys have to deal with any employees stealing from you? Good life. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think you better answer that one first. You sound like you got something. Um, I'm trying to think. Listen. We listen. It's been, it's been a, it's been a process, and some. What I think the time, I think, one of, when, as you grow in business, you realize that the little small things that they move doesn't bother you more so the time. Like, coming to work late, mm. on the job, just ain't doing nothing, not being productive. And you and because you're so grounded in your business, you don't get to see these things. Like, I remember one time, the whole draw gone missing on me. Oh. The whole draw gone missing on me. And I didn't realize it until it was at the end of the shift to start closing out. And at the time, my girlfriend and my wife, she came to me. She say, where the money? And she had this long receipt. And I said, the money in the front? And she say, no, it isn't. And, and the thing about it, right, we had this big conversation and wow. talked to staff. And then you know, the next day, the only thing that we were able to do was still open up. And we said, open up. We had the, the late payday for one day. And had to pay them, still had to pay staff. So it's like, it happens. You cannot stop stealing. You, if you're trying to go in a business and say, hey, how am I going to prevent theft for stealing? You cannot stop that. So whenever you do your business, your pie, your, fact, your pie factor, whatever, include 10% death of theft. Include that in your, in your loss because that's going to happen regardless. Um, yeah. now you see, we, when we think about teeth, when we think about money, we think about someone coming to teeth for a cookie and one in the kitchen, Sometimes it's the stuff beyond that. It's the stuff as simple as um, someone doubling the order and sending it out. Someone not telling the customer what you have for sale. Sometimes not answering the phone. Mm -hmm. So you miss that sale. Taking the wrong information for a big order. Mm -hmm. And then you call it back, it's the wrong number. So it's a lot of other factors that you have in stealing. It's not just the liquid cash, which is, it hurts you the most sometimes, but it's also the other side of it too. Did you ever find who stole that drug? Uh uh, I don't think I, God doesn't allow me to find all these. Things. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Okay, I'm gonna ask a question. One of our live questions from Mr. Shavado Gibson. What have you enjoyed most about starting your own company? Um, for me, I'd say the the freedom, the freedom, the control of your time. Um. Now, initially, that a lot, most of the time, you'd be working. You'd be working 17, 18 hours a day. Um, but as you grow and you're able to you know, hire people, you have more control of your time. Like, I'm able to come here and speak to you guys now. Um, I don't have to you know, ask for requests for time off or put in for vacation or anything like that. Um, so for me, it's been the freedom to control uh, my own time is what I've enjoyed. And also, um, the customers, when, whenever you go somewhere and you're met with a positive uh, welcome, um, that, that's always, always great to know that customers enjoy your products, they enjoy your service. When they say, you know, I'm in there all the time and I love this and I love that, that's always a wonderful feeling and, and it never, ever gets old to this day. I've been doing this for 10 years now mm -hmm. and I still feel the same way whenever someone comes up to me and says that they enjoy our products, the day I, I felt, um, on day one in 2012. And so it's the freedom, 
and the satisfaction of our customers, you know, putting smiles on their faces, making their days better. All right, and our final question of the day. Did anybody, did anybody ever say that you won't be successful in your business, or did anybody ever say that they didn't believe in you? Mm. Yeah, go ahead, yeah. Um, well, I wouldn't say no one never said it, but I'm sure they thought it. Mm -hmm. um, but I came from government school, from primary school, trade to senior, um, and to College of Bahamas. I don't know if it's in the university, it's in the College of Bahamas. So I've always been in the population of one of those said, who was, I sure but I do sure but them. So I'm sure they thought it, but I've had teachers who came to me in, in my establishment, former teachers, former administrators, um, former bullies, <laughs> but so everyone um, who I've seen and who I've engaged and interacted in my lifetime has supported me. So um, I'm I'm sure they probably thought it, but they haven't said it directly to me. Yeah. I never tell no one about my business, so I never had that experience. I I kept it to myself the whole time, and that was a decision made because when I was in the music industry, um, it was my mother who didn't believe in you know me pursuing uh, a music career and ever since then I said you know what I ain't never tell nobody what I do and I can just do it and let the work speak for itself all right my, my moderator has asked me to take one more question because yeah, I was at the back of the room um, do you all receive a good salary from your business for yourself because like y'all say, the price is going up, so y'all gonna have to take money from your personal salary and put it in the business. Mm, My wife will take care of me. <laughs> 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 well, for me, I, 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 I receive a pretty decent salary, but like you mentioned, which is very important, when things do get rough, um, I'm, I'm gonna be the last one to get paid. I'm gonna make sure all my staff gets paid first, and if I have to get paid late, a week late, however it takes, I'll be the last one to get paid. Um, but that is very important that you brought it up because in business you do have to pay yourself. A lot of people don't do that. A lot of people act as though their business funds, everything income is their salary, and that's why a lot of people go out of business. You have to separate your personal from your business. So you have to give yourself a salary. Um, make sure it's a, it's a salary so you can survive. Um, but initially, it may not be that big because you're just starting out and you want to grow the business. But um, great question. Uh, so yes, I do get a salary. But if push comes to shove, I'll be the last one to get paid. Let's give our panelists a round of applause. <laughs> wow, I can't believe this day so quickly came to an end. The last session truly gave us all something to think about in becoming our own entrepreneurs. Coming to give the vote of thanks is our business education officer, Ms. Aldika Cobra. Let us welcome as she comes. Now, gentlemen, I know you may have to leave at this time. I, I can take a quick photo with you if you're ready to. You're good? Okay. I was, I was, ready, to take, I was ready to take more questions. All right. Well, some of them may grab at you before we leave. But what do y'all think about today? Did you have fun today? Oh my goodness, it was really and truly awesome. Today was awesome. Can I tell you all, I was nervous? I was nervous. I couldn't tell. Really? But I want to give special thanks to <laughs> a few persons. Um, in his absence, the director, Mr. and Dr. Marcellus Taylor, Ms. Sharon Poitier, our Deputy Director of Education of Curriculum and Instruction. To Ms. Ms. Rizkeeshan Bastian, Deputy Permanent Secretary, Acting. The entire Career and Technical Education section, all of the clerks that worked along with me to ensure that this project came off well. Thank you so much. To my business junior high school coordinators, give yourselves a round of applause. This day would not come off without you and you bringing your students to participate. Thank you all so much. The communication section, they are my family as well. 
They, you know, only one other person really is do me bad, but you know, but everybody else in the communication section, I love you all. The same one who talk. <laughs> to my able moderator, give him a round of applause, Mr. Shema Nordich. I called Shema after Shema was actually my 2020 speech competition winner. And when I said, when I thought about having a student being the moderator, he was the first person that popped up into my mind. And so he was calling me and keeping me on point uh, up until 2 o'clock this morning. I said, Ms. Corbett, I, I practiced till but 3 o'clock. I, I sleep, I sleep. <laughs> but he did an excellent job. And you know, you know I got you. You know how me and you go. Thank you so much. Um, to the Ministry of Youth, for housing us today. Thank you so much um, for allowing us to use your space and your venue. To my wonderful students, I cannot forget about you. I hope that you received as much information as you could have today. You took in and wrote down some important points about, you know, in the various careers in business, whether it was from entrepreneurship or from any other STEM area, there are so many things for you all to, to get into. I mean, the amount of careers that are available to you right now, like I really wished I, I may not have been a teacher in the first instance, but if I had a portion of the opportunity that you all have, the sky is the limit. The sky is the limit. Don't let anybody tell you, you cannot do it. Focus. Put your time and your effort in your work, and you will be fruitful. You will be fruitful. Okay? So once again, thank you all so much. And I didn't have it here on the program, but I'm going to ask you all to stand. As you depart, I want to pray before you all leave to go into your separate schools. And you have at least, you'll be able to catch one more period. To my viewing audience on Zoom, some persons are viewing us from YouTube as well. Thank you so much for engaging with us today. Share, share the link. If you weren't able, if persons weren't able to watch it today, share it, share it, share it. What's, what's the word we, we learned today? Hashtagging. All right. We need to make a hashtag for today. Career and technical uh, um, day or something. You all got to come up with it for me. All right. So let's bow in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. God, we thank you for your presence in this atmosphere. I thank you for all of our teachers and students who are here present and those who are amongst the family islands of God. We ask for your continued protection during this COVID-19 period. I thank you for the hands that prepared the food. I thank you for the hands that reached out to assist. I thank you for the hearts that came to share with these students. In your precious name I pray, amen. And amen. Thank you. All right.